Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to IBM TechCon 2023. Uh, we have we are in day two, and uh, this is the last session for the day. We'll have office hours after this. This is your host, Sean Almeida, uh, IBM sales leader uh, for the Americas. I have with uh, me two exciting uh, speakers, Alec Atoski and uh, Mandy Reyes product managers and system engineer, and they are very excited to bring the IBM SEV1 NPM platform to you. Uh, you would have heard from other speakers a little bit about NPM, but I'm sure they will have a different take on it, and they're going to go deeper into what SEV1 can do. With that, I'll hand it over to Alec and Mandy, and uh, please feel free to uh, chime Chime in, send in your questions on the pigeon hall. Keep this interactive. We have good speakers here and make sure you get the most out of them. With that, Mandy and Alec, all yours. Thanks, Sean. All right, Alec, are you ready to kick us off today? Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Alec Artoski. I'm here with uh, product marketing, uh, Mandy Reyes. And what we are going to do today is walk you guys through how using SEV1 MPM here with IBM can ultimately help you guys gain full view of your network performance uh, using a great product that we have here as part of the IBM portfolio. So really quickly, we want to start this off with uh, a poll question. It, I think it would help all of us to sort of see where we are and sort of people understand where we're going from here. So one of the things that I think will be valuable as part of this session is ultimately determining whether or not you guys are utilizing both metrics and flows as part of your NPM or performance management uh, workflow. Um, as many of you know, obviously metrics is something that you guys are familiar with, but uh, we're curious whether or not you guys are also utilizing NetFlow, SFlow, JFlow, IPFix, any other good stuff. So if you guys wouldn't mind participating in our poll question here, we'd love to see uh, what you guys are using, how you guys are feeling. Um, there are five easy questions here. Thinking about it, using both, sometimes specific use case, not using it at all. And my personal favorite, this is not my job, uh, <laughs> somebody else's job. So uh, if you guys could go ahead and go ahead and respond to those poll questions for us, give you guys a few moments to do that. That would be really helpful to us, if you don't mind. So Alec, we're gonna give this about a minute for everyone to respond to the poll. Fantastic. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Alec, I'll try to see if I can get some of that information back to you while we're chatting. Awesome, thank you so much, Mandy. Okay, so it looks like I'm kicking us off today. Um, so what if you could have network observability with application context? What could this look like? Um, first, you need to have the confidence that you can get all the network performance data that you need, metrics from over 250 different vendors, 
across hybrid infrastructure, plus flow data for application contexts with the ability to scale and collect billions of data points a day. Um, many NPM systems on the market today limit how much data you can collect. So many of you are probably familiar with that. I see some SolarWinds um, users in the chat. If your role calls for collecting network data, which is complicated enough pulling from highly distributed gear, um, the last thing you need is scale limits um, placed on how often and how much performance data you can collect from your devices. Um, but of course, collection is just a start. Um, collecting data is nearly useless unless you can act on, uh, act on that data pretty quickly. So progressive organizations are leaning into machine learning based analytics, um, which we'll talk about a little bit today, that automatically knows what is normal and what is not, and only being alerted when something is not normal based on standard deviation analysis. You also want to learn from your performance data to help understand the future um, with dynamic capacity planning and trend analysis for resource planning. So now that you have a system that both collects and notifies you when it really matters, it's time to start thinking about how you and the teams you work with leverage that data um, by utilizing advanced visualizations and workflows. So everyone needs a starting point. Um, several, Sub1 offers dozens of day one dashboards and troubleshooting workflows that let you easily and quickly pivot between metric and flow data, um, similar to what Alec was mentioning earlier. Plus, if you use a third party tool, like let's say Splunk or Elk for your logs, um, you can visually integrate log data right alongside um, and build dashboards and workflows based on metric flow and log data. And then finally, in our last column here, um, expanding our story beyond the network, you can leverage this data across the rest of your IT operations tools and processes, and I'll explain a little bit more around how that works later, um, but you'll need a system that offers webhooks ready to integrate NPM data and help automate IT processes and flexible enough to share your performance metrics with other systems um, or even integrate, let's say, third-party data sources into a single dashboard. Um, now, I'll pass it over to Alec, who will double-click into some of these pillars um, and speak to the specifics around the data that's um, powering uh, these pillars and the outputs. Awesome. Thank you, Mandy. So I really love this slide because this slide really shows top to bottom, you know, what the SEV1 NPM solution is providing, right? So if you think about your environment as a whole, Everything is very segmented in most people's environments. You have Wi-Fi, you have network, you have uh, crazy things like branch, 5G, MPLS, all kinds of great data sets that are being collected, right? And in today's world, typically you have one solution for one data set, one solution for a different data set. If you're using a particular NPM tool, you might have a situation where you have a particular module for one data set or a particular uh, you know, organization structure for a different data set. We as uh, SEV1 have a different approach to this. So what we do is we have the ability to be data agnostic. We can collect data from really any data source that is a time series database, right? So as long as it has a value and it has a metric, it's something we can collect. And one of the ways that we're able to do that is not just by doing simple SNMP data collection, which is something that you know is table stakes in today's world, but we can collect data sets using all different other kinds of technology, whether or not you wanna use something like Cisco IPSLA whether or not you wanna use APIs to collect data, whether or not you wanna ingest flow traffic, whether or not you wanna ingest non-standardized data. To us, it doesn't really matter. So as long as it has a time series database and we can get that data into the system, we as SEV1 can ingest that and begin to normalize it and visualize it all in one place. So we like to call ourselves the single pane of glass because we don't have a need to have one particular module or visualization engine for metrics, a different module or visualization engine for flows, no, no additional one for Wi-Fi. It is one place where all of your data can sit and all be visualized in a single location. And the value behind that is that it's not just the data collection, even though that is really powerful, but it's then what you can do when you have a full visibility into your infrastructure. So if I can see my data as it comes all the way from the switch to the firewall, and then the firewall out to let's say an edge device, all the way out to the user, I can get that full stack visibility. And that full stack visibility is what allows me to really understand how A is affecting B and B is affecting C. So we can get that advanced workflows to help you guys understand what's going on in your environment. We can even use the historical data we've collected to help you understand how it's going to affect 
things in the future, things like capacity planning and intelligent alerting. And then one of the things that Mandy had touched on is the ability for us to then take that data and get it into a third party tool or a data lake or some other entity where you might want to use this data for a different purpose that is not NPM related. So as long as it is data and as long as it has a time series database, we as Sev1 can ingest it, visualize it, and then give you guys the ability to make that data super useful. Something like troubleshooting, SLA compliance, capacity planning. And then ultimately the goal here is to give you one place to go that visualizes all this stuff. So in the end, if we can help you consolidate tools as well, that's ultimately a benefit. But we are ultimately designing it or have designed a tool that is the best collector of data at scale that allows us to collect all of these data sets from all of these different vendors and give you one place to go to visualize, access, and troubleshoot all those data sets. All right. Back so to you, Mandy. Um, yeah. So here's an overview um, of our latest release, uh, 6.4, um, which focuses on helping users do more with their network performance data through improvements to application awareness, uh, software-defined networking, and enhanced AIOps ecosystem support um, through an integration. So also, if you're interested, real quick, in learning about what's coming very soon in 6.5, you can head over to the IBM Step 1 community and join an upcoming event on March 29th, where the product team will preview what's coming in 6.5. We're very excited about this release. Um, I will make sure that we drop a link in the chat for you guys to um, join that, uh, that session. So 6.4. Um, 6.4 brings a series of enhancements on how flow data is collected, analyzed, visualized. Um, the goal here is to provide richer application-aware context to help users monitor and troubleshoot their networks running key business applications. So we saw improvements to country-based flow reporting to identify bad actors, um, improved Sankey diagrams, and are now offering, um, speaking of scale, are now offering higher flow capacity um, higher flow collection capacity. In fact, it's a 50% increase, um, making flow collection more efficient for some of our largest enterprise customers. Um, we also expanded SD-WAN out of the box support to include popular vendor Fortinet. Um, so we will be collecting, analyzing, visualizing performance metrics from Fortinet based networks now. And last but certainly not least, 6.4 does add a new capability to embed drill back URLs directly into any sub one NPM alert. So this integration can be leveraged within the AAOps ecosystem. And of course, our own IBM Cloud Pack for Watson AAOps. Um, users of AAOps tools can now navigate directly from their native UI um, back into sub one via the drill back URL in a context relevant way for more details on alert conditions. So um, it's a capability that really connects the network engineer with the site rel reliability engineer. Now this feature will help users to troubleshoot alerts and help shorten the time to resolution, of course, because these um, key, um, key players are collaborating directly. Um, in addition, um, the release, um, the recently released Cloud Pack for Watson AAOps version 3.5 includes the ability to import NPM network topology data um, along with daily updates. So this exciting news um, here is this integration will augment Watson AAOps topology with sev one NPM based physical and virtual network to device relationship data um, for more intelligent correlation um, and probable cause analysis. So our team demonstrated this integration this morning. Um, it was a highly attended session. I, I do recommend that you go and check out that recording after we're done here today. Um, back to you, Alec. Fantastic, thanks, Mandy. So, um... Really quickly, uh, Mandy had mentioned, and obviously the goal of this is to give you guys a demonstration of the Sev1 NPM platform. So what we are looking to do here and, and what this demonstration is going to show is, you know, Sev1 NPM is designed to be the best collector of data at scale, obviously. But one of the things that we have the ability to help you guys with is monitoring applications that obviously utilize the underlying architecture uh, of a network, right? So what this demonstration is going to do is it's going to go through and show how we as Sev1 NPM can go ahead and provide you that insight into an application, ultimately help you troubleshoot why an application isn't performing properly, and giving you that visibility into an application from the underlying architecture, so that when an application isn't performing properly, you have a solution that gives you an underlying visibility of why that application is not working correctly. 
So I will go ahead and transition into uh, our demo really quickly. Perfect. Looks like we are good to go here. Uh, Mandy, if you can just confirm that this is what's showing. It's good. Awesome. So really quickly, uh, just want to put some table stakes out here for sort of what the Sevlin solution is. So if you think about your network as a whole, obviously it is a lot of underlying pipes, interfaces, all kinds of good stuff that you guys need to keep an eye on to make sure that things are operating properly, right? What we as Sevlin provide is this single pane of glass. We call this our, our data insight engine here. This is where all of your data is visualized. What this demonstration is I'm gonna walk you guys through today, as I had mentioned, is the ability to show you how we can monitor applications and help you understand you know, when an application is not performing properly, how we can ultimately troubleshoot and get to the resolution as to why that application is not performing correctly. Because if you think about an application, an application is obviously more than just the number of widgets that it makes. There is an underlying architecture that will supply information, data, traffic, resources to an application. So when we're doing application monitoring, we're making sure that you have the understanding of what that application is utilizing and how we can ultimately help you monitor those applications to find out what's particularly going wrong with them. So in this demonstration, we're gonna go through really the pillars of what SEV1 is, how it works, and how it can ultimately resolve that issue I described with application monitoring. So if you look at this report here, this is designed to show, in this case, six applications, application services that we have. Everything from, in this case, Pulsar to public website to an e-learning portal to your underlying email architecture. And what we're able to do is actually use something that we call as a, a cross-object calculation and object grouping to sort of lump together all of the data sets that correspond to a particular application and then allow us to troubleshoot and dive down into how that application is performing and ultimately resolving the problem that we might have. So if you look at these six applications, you can see that realistically one of them is performing worse than the rest of the others, which is this Pulsar application. If you look directly to the right, what you'll see here is that this report on the left is the health score for the application. You can see that of all the applications, we only have a 50% health score for our Pulsar application. But if you look to the right hand side here, what you will see is every pull point that is being collected for that application that is now being mapped and graphed to help you understand not just what the health score is now but what the health score was over time and if you take a look at this and i run my mouse over this you can see that we are collecting a pull point for all six of these applications to see what the health score is pull point by pull point in this case it's in five minute intervals and this is really one of the big things that Sev1 provides that is different than many other MPM tools, is that we can give you high level reports, but we also keep every granular piece of data that's being collected for a full year inside the system. So we keep all of our raw data for a full year inside the database. So you can go back in significant periods of time to see how things performed three, six, eight months in the past, but you can also utilize that data as a way to help compare data sets to your current data sets, which is something we will do as we continue to go through this demonstration. But I think it's important to understand that though we are looking into application monitoring here for these individual services, SEV1 is keeping all of our data raw stored in the database for a full year. So that data is accessible for very long periods of time. The other thing that we're doing here is we're looking at more than just the health score, we're looking at the availability of each one of these applications. I know that that's typically table stakes, but it's important to understand that a health score is different than availability. Understanding the health of an application is very different than is the application reachable. So understanding whether or not an application is reachable versus what is the health of the application is also very different and very important. You can see that we can look at the availability of that Polestar application is below 100% over the period of time. And that if we run our mouse over this heat map on the right hand side, you can see that there are certain periods of time for which the availability drops and then the availability then recovers for that application. So it's more than just is this thing available? Is it up? Is it down? We are monitoring the availability of this application to understand when it was available, how long it wasn't available for, and when it ultimately dropped and wasn't it accessible anymore. 
So ultimately what we want to do is we want to understand what is going on with this Pulsar application. Why is the health score so low? What is wrong with this application? So what I'm going to do is actually a really incredible piece of technology that we have here inside the Cephalon solution, which we like to call report linking. So if you think about reports inside your current monitoring tool, typically what people have to do is they need to build a very specific report all the time. And those specific reports are hard coded. So they have to go to a specific place every time. Well, what this report is designed to do is allow me to access data sets quickly on the fly when I need them. So if you look at the availability statistics on the left hand side here, you can see that these words are highlighted blue. And what that means is that there's more information that's available for each individual data set simply by clicking and drilling down into the report. So if I click on Pulsar here, what's going to happen is I'm going to have the ability to then take this data set and transfer it to an additional report to get more information. And the system is smart enough to know that, OK, well, this is an application. So let's go to the business application report or we can look at the underlying network device summary for that as well. So in my case here, obviously, I want more information about the application itself. So if I go ahead and click business application, what the system is doing is it's going to automatically transfer that information over into a specific business application report. So now if you look in the upper left hand corner, you can see that this report is now specific to my Pulsar application. I've now told the system, I want more information about just my Pulsar application. If I do the drop down, you can actually see that there are more than just our Pulsar applications in here, meaning that this report can be utilized for more than just this one specific application. And we call this report filtering. So you can build one really good report and then filter that one really good report down and then ultimately reuse it over and over and over again without having to custom build a report for every single application, for every single device, for every single group of devices. So you can see how that functionality alone is very valuable and how it can greatly reduce the amount of admin work that's required in a portal, but also ultimately get you to your end result very quickly without having to do too much digging, clicking around, is really to call the swivel chair effect of going from tab to tab, report to report. So by using report linking, we do provide that quick access availability to the data set you're looking for when needed on demand, or whether or not you want to go through this report and select individual applications and have the report automatically update to now just be public website. And I can go back to look at Pulsar and now this report is specific to that individual application. So if you look at this report, the very first tab here is designed to show me the status of the application. Ultimately, I want to know what the alarms and the alerts are that correspond to the underlying Pulsar application. So if you look at the very top bar here, you can see that we have 21 total alarms and alerts that are associated with this application. We can see the underlying components of this application. It's comprised of an edge router, comprised of actual individual Pulsar components on individual sites and locations. Then I can actually see each alert broken down by the time it was triggered, ultimately the object or the, the metric for which that was triggered from. And then most importantly, you can get things like the errors and alert messages that correspond to those individual data sets. And I really wanna stop and highlight this because this is particularly important. One of the big things that the SEV1 NPM solution does is that it uses what we call a baseline to build dynamic or AI specific alarms and alerts. So because we keep so much historical data and because we keep that data raw in its form for a full year, the SEV1 solution is able to use the historical data that we collect to compare your current data sets to your historical data sets. And I'm not, not just referencing like Tuesday or March, I'm talking about poll point by poll point. So if you think about, in this case, this is a CPU metric, I just picked a random metric. You can see that the system is triggering an alarm because the average CPU utilization is 200% of what is normal for that individual CPU metric for a certain period of time. In this case, it was 30 minutes. So if you think about the power behind that, in some solutions or tools, you have to say, okay, if my CPU goes above 90, I wanna be notified. Well, that's great. This might always run at 90%. It might just be one of those CPUs that we utilize at 100% all the time. That doesn't really help me. But if I can build an alert policy or an alert structure that says, okay, you as a system know what is normal. We know that during business hours, the CPU for this is 80. 
but then maybe outside of business hours, it's 50. My alert policy that can compare the current data sets that I have to the historical data sets that we see, or what we like to call what is normal. I can compare what is normal to my current data sets and have the system automatically generate an alarms and alerts if we deviate from normal. And this is a really powerful component of the SEV1 platform. That means that I can build a single alert policy that says, okay, if my bandwidth exceeds what is normal, I wanna be notified. That is one alert policy that corresponds to all of my devices, all of my interfaces. If my CPU begins to deviate or drop below what is normal, I wanna be notified. And you can do it for tier one devices. You can do it for priority one devices. You can organize this any way you want. But the benefit here is that we are using AI ops and predictive analytics to take your historical data set and say, okay, this is what I normally see. I want you to notify me if I deviate from normal. So it allows you guys to be proactive. Uh, the phrase I like to use is that you want to know there's smoke in your kitchen long before your house burns down. And that's really what this is providing is a proactive way to understand what's going on in my environment to say, okay, this is beginning to become a problem. I want you to investigate it way before I begin to lose applications or I begin to drop actual processes and things like that. So that is a core component of the way the SEV1 platform works. It is out of the box functionality. It is something that is available to every metric that is collected in the SEV1 platform. But it's really important because that is really what gives you guys the ability to advance and be proactive versus doing autopsies and figuring out what went wrong post-mortem. So Alec, we actually have those poll results. Um, question as a reminder was, are you using um, metric and flow? Um, and so we have a nice little bell curve, actually. So we got about a quarter of folks um, saying that they use both all the time, about 50% saying they're thinking about it, and then another quarter that are, say, not using Flow at all. Um, so nice little bell curve there. Yeah. That's awesome. And, Thank and you. Ma That's really great. Mandy and Alec, I had a, another question. I know just looking at this, right, this is a rich dashboard, and, and Alec, like you said, the early warning systems are very helpful to a lot of the ops people. So I was thinking generally for the audience to just get an understanding, how much effort is taken? You said it was out of the box, but how much effort or how much time does it typically take to light up a dashboard like this for a, for a typical client? That's a great question. So the first thing that's important to understand is that obviously this is based off historical data, right? So we re typically recommend the system needs to run for about eight to 10 weeks for it to be accurate, right? We're using historical data. But in terms of the actual alarms themselves, we as SEV1 provide you our best practice out of the box alarms and alerts the moment you turn the system on. So we give you about 20 or 30 alert policies that are automatically enabled the moment you turn on the system. And some of them are using our dynamic baselining. Other of them are what we would call static alerts, things like availability. But I would say that it's a best practice that you would need the system running for about 10 weeks before the baselines are 100% tailored. But in terms of the admin work of setting up the alarming and the alerting, we give you our best practices out of the box. So there's really, uh, you guys get a really great start on the alarm and the alerting. It is not like we say, okay, have at it, build what you want. We're always going to provide you our best practices. So when you turn on the system, you get our best practice alerts, you get our best practice reports, you get our best practice groupings. So I would say that from the moment you turn it on, you will begin to get alarms and alerts. But I would say it takes about 10 weeks of data collection for it to be 100% ready to roll. Thank you, Alec. And, and I think that's good to understand that you get a lot of value out of the box and the system learns and, and improves over time. Thank you. No, it's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. So I kind of want to jump into our solution here, our troubleshooting initiative that we have here. So just to recap, we're looking at our Pulsar application. It had a particularly low health score, and we're trying to find out ultimately what is causing that low health score and ultimately what the issue is with our drops in availability. So the very first thing that I want to check on is the WAN traffic, obviously. We are having actual traffic pass through an individual application, right? And the very first thing that pops out to me is that there is an abnormal spike here that is occurring in this report. So you can see here that there's a particular component here, this New York Edge device. The total amount of traffic that's passing through here has greatly exceeded what is normal for that period of time. So if I isolate this individual data set here, 
I can hover over this and you can see that we have a massive spike in total HC Octex traffic for this individual component of time, right? And the system here, again, knows what is normal. So we're looking at the current data set, which is 6.4 gigabits. You can see that on average, we usually see 4.26 gigabits. We have exceeded what is normal. So clearly there is some large increase in traffic here that is ultimately causing some kind of problem. And if we were to go back and correlate this with our availability metrics that we're collecting, we can see that as we're looking at the availability here, we do have instances where we are exceeding the availability, which is acceptable by the administrator. So you can see there's shading in here, right? This shading corresponds to what is an acceptable range of deviation. So if I look at this individual drop here in availability, which corresponded to that, that increase in WAN traffic, you can see that this is about when we drop below what is acceptable in terms of availability metrics for this individual application. So you can see that the availability was 40. We've dropped below the maximum availability metric, which is 44. But ultimately, not being available at all is clearly a problem. So we're monitoring the availability here. We can see that we have that drop in availability here. If we come back and look at the WAN metrics again, we can see that that increase in WAN traffic corresponds to that drop in availability. So clearly there's something going on with traffic and availability here that is causing something to be odd about that application. Neither the availability metrics nor the traffic metrics match what's going on for that individual period of time. But if you look to the right-hand side here, we're providing more than just metrics for traffic. This report on the right-hand side here is actually monitoring errors, right? So you can see that we are having a huge increase in errors. Again, roughly around 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon that corresponds to this massive increase in traffic. So we've had a drop in availability. We've had a massive increase in traffic that is abnormal in our environment. And you can see that we have a ton of errors that are corresponding when we have that massive increase in traffic. Well, one of the things that I had mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation is that we as SEB1 can provide another layer of visibility that typically you can't get with an NPM monitoring solution which is looking at the flow traffic that corresponds, the application flow traffic that corresponds to the metric traffic. So you can see here that there are two spikes in traffic here as we go out our period of time. There are also the same corresponding spikes in traffic here, but you can see that there is a larger increase in traffic over that period of time than we see here here on the other increase of traffic, a big spike. And the odd part about it is that if I were to isolate this, you can see that most of the traffic here is this individual application. But if I specifically look at the Pulsar application traffic, you can see that we're again getting that massive increase in application traffic that does not match up to the previous period or to the other period of time as well. So there is a huge increase in traffic that's going on for this application. And we can see that if we look at both the flow traffic coming from both NetFlow and the actual metric traffic going over the interfaces, that we are seeing that increase in traffic as well that matches the discounts. One of the things that I think is particularly valuable here that I've demonstrated is that if I zoom in on the top report here, my flow report below automatically refreshes to just show me the flow traffic that matches that metric traffic. And that's one of the things that we like to call report linking, is that we as SEV1 can automatically correlate data sets between two individual metric types, just by clicking this little plus button in the upper right-hand corner. So when I say that SEV1 really is the single pane of glass, it does provide the ability to quickly and easily visualize network traffic and flow traffic. And you can even show syslog traffic in here if you wanna integrate it with your Splunk or your Elk interfaces to give you that single pane of glass location where I can see more than just metrics. I can see things like errors and discards, traffic and application data all in the same report. So I had mentioned that this is a Cisco device. Obviously it's using Cisco underlying infrastructure. We have that increase in traffic. We have that increase in applications and that massive increase in discards. So what I wanna take a look at is the quality, the MOS score, of the traffic that's going over this individual application during that period of time, right? So if I go ahead and I look at this IPSLA report, one thing very quickly pops out to me is that there is a huge drop in MOS score. For those of you that aren't familiar with MOS score, MOS score is very much the, the zero to five warning sign of 
the quality of service that I'm getting across individual interfaces, right? You obviously would prefer a five, the lower you drop, the, the, less va the less quality of service that we're getting for that individual traffic going over this link. And in this case, we're looking at jitter traffic that's going over interfaces for the edge devices that are corresponding to the underlying application. So you can see that what we're doing here is that we're looking at an application holistically. What is making that application function? What is it working? How are we getting the application to work? It's not how many widgets it's making, it's what underlying resources are providing that application the ability to make widgets. So you can see here that we're having a huge drop in the MOS score. And if we scroll down and look at the actual response times, we're having a massive increase in response times that correspond to the drop in the MOS score for this average RTT and for this jitter. So clearly we're matching up this time span. There's clearly something odd going on here around noon for this individual application. So what I want to do is sort of do a little bit of investigation on my own here to see if I can correlate certain data sets together and understand what is affecting A, B, and C here. And this is really where some of the really cool stuff of Cephalon comes into play. This is a report that we've provided, right? This is an out of the box report that any user can have. But I want to sort of understand these metrics better on my own. Well, it's really easy to do that. I can just click on this report. And again, we go back to the functionality of report linking. So the system understands, okay, you're looking at a specific metric. Do you want to look at an indicator summary? Do you want to use data analytics to understand what's going on? Or do you want to jump into an instant graph workspace and see what these data sets look like together? Well, in my case here, I now know that I've had a drop in availability for, an, for this individual application. I now know that I had a massive increase in traffic that is not normal, corresponding to the baseline historical data we have. We've had a huge increase in errors, and we have the matching application traffic to show that it is specific to Pulsar. And we can see that by using the IPSLA data, correlating that together, that we clearly have a drop in quality. And I just want to stop right there. I've just referenced three very different metric types that SEV1 has just visualized in two different tabs. We're looking at ICMP availability. We're looking at WAN traffic using SNMP for both uh, traffic and errors. We're utilizing NetFlow traffic to look at application data. And now I'm looking at IPSLA traffic to help understand MOS scores and response times. That's four different metric types that SEV1 has just visualized in one single report that is now helping us understand what's going on with this individual application. That is a huge value add that you won't get from other tools where you have the segmented portion of, I have IPSLA for this, I have flow for this, I have metrics for this, I have three different portals where I can't correlate all this stuff together. The single pane of glass gives you the ability to correlate all four of those metric sets in one location. So I wanna go a step further and actually physically compare them on a single report. And this is one of the things that I think is very valuable in terms of capabilities inside a platform. I want to be able to compare data sets for multiple devices in one location without having to build independent reports. I can overlay data sets in a single spot, regardless of device, manufacturer, data set, does not matter. It's all available to me in my, in my tool set here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this edge device, which we clearly are having problems with, and selecting my Pulsar device so that I can overlay two independent data sets together from to the application and the underlying architecture in one location. So I can visualize multiple data sets in one spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some data sets that allow me to visualize what I've mentioned. So I'm going to look at the status information of my individual Pulsar device. I'm gonna look at the IPSLA data of my edge device. And I'm gonna look at the traffic information that is going over my edge device. So what I'm doing is I'm taking three independent metrics. I'm taking availability, I'm taking IPSLA jitter, and I'm taking SNMP metrics. And I wanna overlie them all in a single report so I can see how they look together in one specific location. I'm gonna select the availability metrics, as I had mentioned, of my Pulsar. I wanna come in here and I wanna select the actual uh, total traffic that's passing over this individual gigabit link. 
And I want to go ahead and select the MOS score that we had been looking at for the jitter latency and packet loss. So now if you look at this report, what I've done is, is I have overlaid three different metrics from three different, uh, different data set types, IPSLA, SNMP, ICMP, in one report. And what I want to do is I want to compare those data sets together. So if I go back to our noon data set here, this 11 to noon that we've had, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so that we can get a better view of what's going on. But this is the time period that I want to correlate and see what is going on with this individual data set. So now if we look at this report here, I'm comparing these three metrics. So I can see that when the availability is low at 40% here, I have that massive increase in traffic over that edge router and that MOS score has dropped dramatically. So if I were to, just for sake of argument here, visualize this in terms of application traffic, I can come in here, click this button again, and draw the application traffic and see what's going on for these individual applications. And I can see here that we do have that increase in application traffic, as we had seen previously, alongside this massive drop in uh, MOS score when we had the increase in traffic. So this is the key metric or the key visualization here. This is where I can 100% visualize and correlate that these metrics are all together. These metrics are all correlated together, right? And I think, this Alex, showing... like you said, this, oh, this actually makes a huge difference when you're trying to, when you have an outage or when you're trying to fix something, this kind of overlays, this kind of bringing all the data together, this kind of correlation, is basically what drives the the time to resolution uh, or, or those times, right? The resolution times come become really compressed now. And I think right. there was, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, please. No, go ahead. Yeah, and there was a question around the visualization. So I thought since we, we are talking about all the rich visualization, somebody had a question on how SEV1 works with Grafana because it's again a, a quick, Clients tend to use Grafana as a visualization tool. So how does uh, SEV1, and I know SEV1 integrates, but I wanted to get your expert uh, view on that. Yeah, so what I would say is that the this data insight platform would ultimately be designed as a way to uh, visualize SEV1 data outside of Grafana. There are use cases and there are visualization types that you can do in SEV1 out of the box that you would not be able to do in Grafana. So what I've seen is that customers that utilize Grafana end up spending a lot of time doing administrative work to build the same views and visualizations that exist inside the SEV1 platform. Now that's that a good mean point. Can't... So yeah, so now it's all out of the box versus you having to build these custom metrics. And that's a good point. The other question that came up was, how does this work with F5 load balances? And then take that and then you can go back to your flow. Those were the two I, that just popped up. No, and that's a great question. And I'm, I'm glad that somebody brought that up. So we as SEV1 actually have a specific F5 monitoring solution where we have gone above and beyond what is available from F5 and built a solution that provides great context into data sets that are available. If you think about F5 as an example, F5 provides a ton of data. We've seen customers that have 3,000 individual metrics for each F5 load balancer. So what we've done is we've built a solution that is specific to visualizing and representing F5 that then takes some of the data sets, builds some custom metrics, and makes it very easy to ingest and understand what's going on with F5 load balancers. So we have a great independent solution that comes with the product. Uh, it's very easy. We just give you an SPK file and a report pack, and it's up and running. But F5 load balancing reporting is 100% something that we do. We do it really well, and we do it for a lot of customers. So uh, that is something that is available to you with SEV1 with simply just installing a report pack into the system. You can go ahead with your flow. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So um, just wanted to highlight, as, as was mentioned, that this is the way that we can 100% identify and correlate data sets, right? So what this is telling me is that clearly there's a correlation between the overall availability of what's going up and the traffic going up and down. Because it looks like what's happening is that uh, the only servers that are particularly available during this period of time seems to be these New York devices. 
And what's happening is that clearly there is being a saturation here. So we can see that when we have this increase in traffic, there seems to be a saturation over these New York Edge devices. So the way that we can verify that based upon this report is to go back to our original page here, we were looking at availability. And I know that we were saying that availability doesn't tell the whole story because it usually doesn't. But one of the things that we want to identify here is based on the correlation we've done, we can see that there's a saturation of traffic over those New York devices for that period of time. So what I want to do here is I want to isolate the data sets here for these individual Pulsar devices that are not the New York devices, right? So if I come in here and I specifically identify these individual devices that are not Pulsar, what we can see here is that there is a 0% availability for most of these devices at that 11 o'clock noon time span. But if I add back in these New York devices, you can see that the New York devices were available but the San Francisco and the Singapore devices were not. So what we can actually do here and sort of what was correlated is that we got an alarm that said, hey, we're having an availability issue, but we really needed to understand the underlying architecture, underlying the underlying correspondence of the application. Just getting a notification that says the application is not available or that the health score is bad doesn't help me solve my problem. I need to understand why the health score was low why it wasn't reachable, why we're having a problem. And what we were able to do is take the data sets that we have, the traffic passing through the WAN, the IPSLA metrics, the application data in the flow to then correlate that, okay, this clearly has to be a saturation availability issue. And that's where by just simply identifying which the, the fact that that New York device was being saturated, we can see that basically what's happening is we are doing a massive uh, for some reason, we're losing access to these Pulsar devices for both Singapore and San Francisco during that period of time. And the reason that we're having application problems is because of the fact that we're losing uh, reachability of those other devices. So the number one culprit for that traditionally is if we were to go back to the device availability here of these devices. So if I wanted to just look at these as an example, you can see that these New York devices are available 100% of the time. These Singapore and other devices are not. Typically what that means is that this is a maintenance window issue, traditionally. If you look at this, you can see that we're available and then we drop off. I would say the number one thing that we would look at here is what our maintenance windows are based upon the device availability and the fact that these devices are just being saturated a certain period of time. But realistically, what we've identified here as a network engineer is we've understood why the application is not performing correctly. I can now go back to my team, my application team and say, I have solved this problem. We're oversaturating, we're having an availability issue. For some particular reason, these devices are going offline. We need to understand if this is a maintenance window issue because nine times out of 10, it is. So what we've really done here, if you think about what we've accomplished is we've identified that we had a problem with the health score. We've been able to identify that we could specifically correlate three or four different metric types to understand that we can identify a saturation issue for an individual device. And then we're under able to understand that the saturation is occurring due to a drop in availability for the underlying architecture for both the Singapore appliances and the San Francisco appliances that are supplying that. So if you think about how long it would take you to do that in silos, how long it would take you to do that in different locations and not having those data sets correlated. By correlating SNMP, ICMP, IPSLA, NetFlow, availability, WAN traffic, all that good stuff in one report, and then being able to physically correlate those in one spot gives you the ability to reduce that mean time to repair or even just shed light into things where people go, oh, my application's not working. It's the network. What's the problem? Now we can give them an answer. Now we can investigate. Now we can figure out what the heck is going on here. And that's really what the Sev1 solution is designed to do, is to be able to tell you what parts of your underlying architecture are affecting your application using flow data, which is why we asked that question about flow data in the beginning. Do you use flow data? Well, I can get application-specific information from flow, correlate that with my metrics, my IPSLA, my availability, and ultimately pinpoint what is causing that application's 
problem, what is causing the degradation in the health score of that application, and then working backwards with your application team and working backwards with your maintenance team to figure out what is causing that drop in availability. So that's really what the solution provides in a single pane of glass for you guys to give the ability to dive down, understand what's going on. So I'd like to say, this has been a brief demonstration of sort of the capabilities of what SEV1 does. Obviously, we do a lot more than just this type of monitoring of applications. If there's more questions, feel free to reach out. But I will leave this with uh, SEV1 is truly the best collector of data at scale. We provide you that great visibility. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Mandy, I will pass that back to you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Alec, when you say single pane of glass, um, maybe we should explain at least specifically to this conversation that we mean that both NetFlow and metric data is offered in the same tools so that you don't have to download multiple modules that have like really that disconnected experience. Um, and then, and then of course, if you're using a different tool to monitor SD-WAN or a different tool to monitor Wi-Fi or something like that, like that's what we mean by single pane of glass. Yeah. Mandy and Alec, I, I had a question, right? The, when I look at SEV1 and all the innovation that's in SEV1 and everything that you do in the platform, I definitely look at this as the, the next generation tools, right? But there are clients out there who are still using first generation tools or, or some of the legacy tools for some of these network capabilities, either network monitoring, uh, network performance management. Good examples like uh, we saw are, are, uh, are like CA and, and some of the other uh, names that we brought out before. How much, how difficult is it for a client from those first generation tools to migrate over to SEV1? Can you share like some experiences of, of clients going from those tools, the experience of migrating, what they saw before, what they're seeing today, how their life has improved? That's a, that's a great question. So what I will say is that what customers will find is that we can replace 100% of what their first generation tools are, right? So a lot of the first generation tools are doing very simple things like up-down monitoring, very simple bandwidth monitoring, and ultimately, it, it provides some context, but not deep context. So to get them back to where they are in their current first generation is a very quick and easy process. We simply add the devices. And as I said, by default, we immediately begin to monitor things like availability, bandwidth, that stuff. There's no configuration that's really required. Then what you'll find is that the second, the second phase of that is, well, I didn't know I could do that. And then you go through this, this renaissance of, well, maybe I don't need to do it that way, or the way that I was doing in the past isn't the best way to do it. So I would say getting to the from first generation in another tool to SEV1 is a very quick and easy process. You add the devices, you begin the monitoring, you're up and running, you're great. That second generation of, well, I didn't know I could do this. That's really where IBM and SEV1 become very consultative, and we get you to that place you need to be, not the place you were in the past. So it's very easy to get up to where you were, but ultimately getting to where you were isn't good enough. We want to get you to the spot you want to be or need to be. So there's really two phases to that process. Yeah. And Mandy and Alec, maybe you can also talk to some of our clients here about that whole POV process, right? Clients who like what they heard today, but they want to get started, right? How do they get started with SEV1? How do they really start this journey, right? To Yes, this was a great presentation. This was a great this thing, but how do I bring it into in-house into my uh, network operations? How do I go from there? So maybe some details around that would help the audience. Sure. So um, what Sean's referring to is what we call a proof of value, a, a POV process. And what we do is we basically sit down with you, the customer, and identify what your use cases are, what your pain points are, what needs to be proved out, for you to be successful and ultimately use IBM SEV1 and PM as, as a platform. So we, or somebody like myself, will sit down with you and go, okay, let's build a test plan. What do you need to see? How do we need to do this? And what we do is we actually install this in your environment where we go ahead, we take SEV1, we put it in your environment, we look at your devices, your interfaces, your metrics, and then we check off all of the use cases that you need to see to be successful. So it's not a demonstration. It's very much a hands-on process with a trained engineer like myself to prove out the use cases that you need to see to be successful 
And then the best part of that is that now you have a functioning system in your environment where I can't tell you how many times we catch problems in a POV because they didn't know they could do that or they didn't see those data sets. So it really is an on-prem way, or I should say on-prem or cloud way for you to test the SEV1 system in your environment against the things that you need to see your use cases, your requirements. And typically what we find is that by using your environment, by using your data sets, you really understand what's capable and possible versus just a simple demonstration. Thank you, Alec. And I know that whole engagement is totally free to a client. So, and the time uh, that you need to dedicate for this is also very minimal. The IBM team does mo most of it. Hey, Mandy, do you have any closing comments? Yeah, um, so we'll be in the office hours that are immediately following this call. Um, so if you have any specific questions, um, please join those office hours. You can always hit our um, Sub1 webpage on IBM.com and set up a meeting. Um, we have a calendar that you can book a meeting with our team so we can um, start conversations. Um, yeah. So uh, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to join office hours, reach us through the website. Um, we also dropped a link um, into chat. It's a very long link. It's very hard to miss um, that, uh, I, that is for an event that we're having in the community to talk about 6.5, where we um, will um, talk about our next release, which includes cloud monitoring. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you, Mandy and Alec. This was a great session. I think uh, Sev1 is a great tool. And like you said, there's various ways in which you can connect with the Sev1 team and bring the power of this platform into your enterprise. With that, I'll close uh, for today. And again, please join us in the office hours. Uh, please bring questions there. We'll have all of our SMEs there. So feel free to join us there and uh, continue the conversation. With that, thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Alec. And thank you, everyone, for tracking with us on, on the AI ops and IT automation track. This is your host, Sean Almeida, and I'm signing off for the day. Thanks, thank everyone. You.